The title of the message today is God is attracted to your need. All right. Genesis 1, verses 2 to 4. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for these magnificent people here today. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come And somehow you'll get the revelation of this word into our spirits today. Save and heal and deliver in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In Canada, the great nation of Canada, has a lot of mountainous areas. And amongst those mountainous areas, they have small towns which are surrounded by the mountains. And the people there live predominantly in a very overcast, dark time. I've had relatives that have lived there. And when you move there, the people tell you that you need to go out of town at least once a month to a large city where you can see light and get away from the overcast, the darkness. Even in areas like Scandinavia or up in Alaska where they have darkness for months, people get depressed and oppressed so easily. Even businesses will have offices that have light that shines like it's daylight to help. See, darkness always brings issues. In Scripture, in the Bible, there are over 50 biblical figures of speech. There is one that is applicable today, and that is called the law of first mention. What that means is always the first occurrence is very, very important. The first mention establishes an unchangeable pattern with the subject and remaining unchanged throughout all of Scripture, and it is connected to the mind of God. In our reading in Genesis 1 verses 2 and 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Hebrew translation goes like this. God said, light be, and light was. When God spoke a word into the darkness, it changed so quickly that it had to be put in the past tense. That is the power of the Word of God. And so all through Scripture, God spoke into darkness. It was a God word to the darkness. God spoke it to change it, and light came. Not the light of the sun, for that was created On the fourth day. God was proving to mankind. I don't have to have another source to create. What I want to create. What does that mean to you and I today? When your life, my life is out of order. Chaos exists. Sickness needs healing. We need help with finances. With family issues. Darkness has come. I want you to understand today that God is not turned off 
by your need or your trouble. Come on, hallelujah. If you're going to give God a hand clap, give him a good one. I repeat, God is not turned off by your need or by your trouble. He is attracted to our need. He wants to turn the darkness in our life into light. All he has to do is speak a word and the light will come. He wants to come into the midst of our darkness and bring creative order to it so he can make something beautiful out of it. We need to get a word from God. Not some crazy, idiotic, stupid thing that somebody dreams up, but a real rhema word from God. His word is always creative and authoritative. In Genesis 1, God was showing His Word is so creative when He speaks it that it happens and it comes to pass. All through Scripture, God brought light into darkness. Not too long ago, I was speaking to a group of pastors. And after I'd spoken, the meeting was over, a young man came to me and he said, can I talk to you for a few moments? I said, yeah, sure. And he said to me, I'm quitting the ministry. And I replied, good. It was not what he was looking for and I knew that. He said, you don't even know what the problem is. I said, you didn't say there was a problem. You said you were quitting the ministry. And if you don't want to be in the ministry, you shouldn't be in the ministry. So quit. Go ahead and do it. He said, you don't understand. I love it when they say that to me. I've been around long enough that I understand a lot of things. He said, I was stabbed in the back. I said, how many times? <laughs> he said, once. Really? Wow. Hang on a minute. So to pull my shirt out of my pants, pulled it way up my back and said, have a look at my back. He said, what? I said, I've been stabbed in the back so many times. I've got scar tissue on scar tissue on scar tissue and I ain't quitting. I don't have a B plan. <laughs> I said, you know what your problem is? Not you got stabbed in the back. Your problem is you've let darkness come into your life because of it and you need to let God's word get into you and the light of God come. God does not speak just to communicate. God speaks to create, to bring light into the darkness. God's word is motivated by love, mobilized in light, and manifested as life. Let me say that again. God's word is motivated by love, mobilized in light and manifested as life. Very often, as individuals, God's word starts in our life as a seed. 
There's a parable about that. In Numbers 23, verses 19 and 20, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and I have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Hear me today. What God has said, God will do. What God has promised, God will perform. What God has declared, God will do. God will not change His Word. God cannot alter His Word. God will not repent of His Word. His Word is eternal, it is truth, and it works, and it's alive. And it brings light into darkness. Psalm 119, verse 130 says this. The entrance of my word gives light. No darkness, light. Some of you have a seed in you. The beginning of a word. Let it become a full word. Wait on it. Study it, pray over it, imagine it until you become pregnant with it. It may take some time. Ask any woman that's had a child. I can't help you on that, I've never had one. But it may take time, but it will happen. In the Western world church, we've got an attitude. We sort of feel like if we snap our fingers, God will come a running. But it's not quite like that. I love it when things happen instantaneously. But the reality is that very often things happen over a period of time. And understand, we're on a journey. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, For a great and effective door is open to me, and there are many adversaries. You can't have light and darkness in you. If you have darkness, you cannot see where you are meant to be going. The challenge to you and I today is dream big dreams. Allow God to enlarge your capacity and enlarge your influence. God is ready to take you and I to another dimension. Leonardo da Vinci said this, great artist. The problem in life is not we aim too high and miss it. The problem in life is we aim too low and hit it. Everything God does begins with a word. If we have a word from God that changes everything. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's exactly the same principle as Genesis 1.3, when God said, Let there be light, and there was light. See, God wants light to penetrate your darkness, and the darkness to go, and the light to stay. The American translation of the New Testament, sometimes called the Edgar J. Goodspeed version of 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9 says, I have a great and promising opportunity. I have an opportunity to do something I've never done before. 
And that came by a word from God. Jesus is the illustration of God's word when he was on earth. When Jesus showed up, religious leaders did not know what to do with him. It wasn't because he created the miraculous. In John 7, 46 and other verses, they said this, no man ever spoke like this man. The word of Jesus was beyond anything they had the ability to understand because it was creative and it was authoritative and it spoke into darkness and it brought light. When God is ready to deal with a situation, he doesn't have to show up physically. He simply has to send his word. Come on, hallelujah. It is that simple. It is that simple. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. His word brings light into your darkness. All God has to do, I repeat, is send his word. We need to be impregnated by his word. Remember, I repeat, when God speaks, his word is creative and authoritative. When God said, let there be light, the atmosphere of the world of that time became impregnated with his word and the darkness left and the light came. The revelation is words, promises that were spoken in the Old Testament still happened in the New Testament and are still happening today. Oh, that's awesome. Hallelujah. It didn't die with the Old Testament or the New Testament. In Isaiah 53 verse 5 it says, By his stripes we are healed. That's prophetic about the cross and the death and the resurrection of Jesus when he took our sin and our sickness upon himself. Then you go into the New Testament and 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says, by whose stripes you were healed. In the past tense. But it's still a creative word. Can you say amen? We were healed back at the cross of Calvary. All I'm trying to show you is is the power of God's word that brings light into our darkness. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, you remember the story of the Roman centurion. He had a servant who was dear to him, dying sick with palsy. Jesus sent elders to the, to the uh, uh, sorry, the centurion sent elders to G- That's not right. Yes, that is right. The centurion sent elders to Jesus to come to his house and minister to his servant. As Jesus is coming toward the house, Jesus then sends friends and says this. I mean, the centurion says friends to Jesus. Says this. You don't have to come to my house. Watch this. All you have to do is speak the word. That's all you got to do. You don't have to come. I am a soldier. 
I have soldiers under me and I say, go and they go, do this and they do that. How much more will this sickness obey your word if you speak it? He understood the authority and the creativity of the word of Jesus. And then Jesus says, I haven't found such great faith in all of Israel. And this Roman centurion is not even a believer. And when they get home, they discover the servant had been healed at the very moment Jesus spoke the word. Wow. There's a word being spoken into your spirit. It's a creative word. It's a power-packed word. Miracles will break forth. Dreams will be released and fulfilled. Remember Jesus in the raising of Lazarus from the dead in John eleven thirty eight 38 to 44. Jesus went to the tomb, but he didn't go inside the tomb where Lazarus was buried. Now, now understand this. Lazarus is dead. Dead people can't see, can't hear, can't think, can't walk. And Lazarus is wrapped in grave clothes. So Jesus is at the tomb and he tells the people, roll the stone away. He didn't send disciples into the tomb. He stands outside the tomb talking to a man that can't see, hear, walk, think, Lazarus, come forth. The dude's dead. Come on, are you hearing me? There's nothing more dark than somebody that's died. Lazarus, come forth. In other words, I know you can't hear, I know you can't see, I know you can't think, I know you can't walk, but come on out anyway. Come on, hallelujah. He spoke a living word into a dead, dark situation and Lazarus comes out. Oh. Out of the grave came a living man. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Come on, hallelujah. I've come here today to tell somebody, even though your promise, your future, your body, your situation seems dead and dark, God is sending a living, creative, authoritative word into your dark situation. There's a God word entering your spirit and it's beginning to create something. You're becoming pregnant with it. And ultimately you'll give birth to what you are carrying. Some of you are about to give birth as it were now. In Luke 1, Verses 26 to 25. Mary, she's a virgin. The angel of the Lord tells her she's going to be pregnant with a baby whose name will be Jesus. She said, it's impossible. I've known no man. I've had no sex. But the angel says, with God, all things are possible. And then Mary replies, let it be done to me according to your word. It wasn't an idea. It was a word from God. His word 
produce the dream. Then Mary, sometime later, goes over to Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth is six months pregnant carrying John. And Elizabeth says this, when Mary entered her house, the baby let within me and, it, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. When you and I are carrying the promise of God, the word of God, you will feel something move within you, in your spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And you need to be around an atmosphere of faith. Which is what Mary did. When God speaks something to me, I don't want to be around people who say it can't happen, it's impossible, it won't happen. Come on, are you hearing me? I don't want to even be around people that tell me you can't do it. I don't abandon them as friends. I just don't want to be around them when I'm doing that. Paul said in the reading in 1 Corinthians 16, I have a great and promising opportunity. When I was a young preacher, a dear, dear lady came to me and she said, son, which means she was a lot older, when it's God, it'll just go smooth. There'll be no opposition. How wrong she was. Come on, are you hearing me? Paul said, there will be adversaries. If you're doing something, if God's given you a word, if light is coming into your darkness, adversaries will rise up because darkness doesn't like light. And when the adversaries come, you are at your opportune moment. Joshua was given a word. You'll go into a land that I'm giving you, Canaan, flowing with milk and honey. It'll be success. But in order to get there, he had to kill giants in the wilderness. Oh, you say, these adversaries are coming against me. There's nothing wrong. Don't quit. Don't give up. It's still God. If it was God the day you got it, it was still God when the adversary comes against you. Come on, hallelujah. David. Nothing but a shepherd's boy. Brings food to his brothers. He discovers the army of Israel in disarray. What's going on? Oh, there's a giant out there. He's so huge. He's challenged us to a winner-take-all, one-on-one -on -one fight. But nobody's going out to fight him because he's too big, too strong, and he's too... too educated in the art of warfare. Ah, I'll go fight him. God help me slay a bear. God help me slay a lion. I'll go fight him. Glory to God. One of his brothers says to him, what are you up to now? Can't even get help from a brother. So the king hears about it and says, come on in. And he says, you go out in my armor. Puts the armor on him. <laughs> it's too big. It's too heavy. He can't walk in it. If I was in that tent, I would have fled. 
Can't even tell the king's arm is too big. Don't try to put somebody else's armor on. Be yourself. Come on, hallelujah. I constantly get young preachers coming in. I want to be like you. And I go, don't. You're nuts. One of me is enough. <laughs> be who God created you to be. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, be who God created you to be. And do what God told you to do in the way God told you to do it. Of course, you know the story. David slays Goliath and ultimately his four brothers. Wins the victory. God will always bring light into darkness. Come on, hallelujah. Come on. God will always bring light into darkness. That is the pattern of his word. I got a grandson. Well, I've got three of them. But one of them is in sports. And he, says to me, he said to me one time, Poppy, when you were in sports and you won all the things you won, how did you go about it? Well, I did what I was good at. I listened to the people that trained me and I trained and I worked hard. Talent will only take you so far, but when you get to the top, everybody's talented. It's the ones that work hard. Okay. And then at night, I would dream about winning. Yeah? Yeah. And sometimes I'd turn the light on so darkness couldn't get into the light. Oh, that's a good idea, Poppy. This morning I get up. There's a text message from my wife. He plays field hockey, which is pretty big in the British countries. And he's on a representative team, and they played in the New South Wales state competition. And nobody from the area he's in has ever won anything. And my wife says, Zach's team won the state championship. He scored the winning goal in overtime. And he said to tell you, the darkness was gone. <laughs> very simple, very childlike, very kiddish. But are you getting the message? Come on, are you getting the message? God wants to speak darkness into your light. I mean, light into your darkness. Oh, God, help me today. <laughs> hey, you know what would be bad if I carried on and didn't recognize I said it? <laughs> Woo. God wants to bring light into your darkness. Come on, hallelujah. He wants to do it. God is attracted to your need. Let every head be bowed and every eye closed, please. Nobody moving, nobody looking around, nobody talking unless you absolutely have to. This morning, as I did in the earlier service, as I did in yesterday morning service, I want to pray for the greatest miracle that can happen to a human being. That is the miracle of Jesus coming into your heart and life and washing all of your sin 
away. So what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. Every human being is born into this world with an inherent nature of sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve. You, me, and everybody else. But God said, I won't leave you like that. I will make a way out, a way of escape. And he said, if you'll make a choice, a decision to invite me to come into your heart spiritually, I will come in and I will wash all of your sin away. So that at that moment you will be as if you've never ever sinned. I'll bring light of forgiveness into the darkness of sin. At this point, people sit out in the crowd and within themselves, they start making excuses not to do it. That's the adversary coming against you. And they say things like this. I don't want to be religious. We don't want you to be religious either. We're against religion. Christianity is not a religion. It is about relationship. So, well, I've got my church. We're not talking about your church, whether it be this one or somewhere else. We're talking about Jesus coming into your life and washing your sin away. Well, man, I'm cool. My family's always gone to church for generations. No, you're not cool. You see, nobody can make this choice for you. You have to make it for yourself. Well, I'll go home and think about it. That's just a very, very nice way of saying, I'm not going to do it. This is your day. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. And I would like the honor to pray for men and women, young and older, married or single, families, for Jesus to come into your heart and life and to wash all of your sin away. And in order for me to do that, I need you to respond. And I'm going to ask you to respond by simply raising your hand, letting me see it, and putting it down. So all over this building this morning, say, Al, I need Jesus. I need to know my sins washed away. I need to know that I belong to God and God belongs to me. And I need to be sure about it. And I want you to pray for me for that to happen. Would you raise your hand right now? Just put it up. Let me see it all over this building. Hold it up. It's a bit hard to see. I'll start on my right, your left. All right. Here we go. Hands down here, up over there, over there, over there, down in here, over here, up here, up in the balcony, over here. Yes, over here. God bless you. Over here. God bless you. Up in the back there. God bless you. Inside the room, over here, up here, up here. God bless you. You may put your hands down. If there's anybody else out there, say, Al, I need God. I need you to pray for me. I don't understand it all, but I need God. And you haven't raised your hand. Would you just raise it right now, real quick? Just put it up. Let me see it. Yeah, there's some hands going up. God bless you. God bless you. You may put them down. God bless you. Amen. Let's stand together, please. I want you to look at me. And I want to explain something. Just wait until I get through. All over this building this morning, hands were raised. Over here, front and back, up in here, over here, over here, over here, over here, up in the room, in the back. I'm going to ask you if you raised your hand, and even if you didn't, to step out of your seats in a moment, push past the people, Walk down the various aisles and stand across the front facing me so we can pray for you. 
If you brought somebody this morning, kindly invite them to come and receive Jesus and come with them. If you raised your hand and you, you're not sure about coming down the front, grab a hold of somebody and say, come with me. They'll come with you. So why do I need to come to the front? If it was worth raising your hand, it's worth coming down here. Jesus went all the way to the cross for you and I. A few steps down here will not hurt us. It will help us. And so right now, all over this building, as we did in the earlier service, if you raise your hand, would you right now step out of your seat, come on down here and stand in front so we can pray for you. Come now from all over. Come now from all over. They're beginning to move. Come on. Come on. Here they come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God love you. Keep coming. Some from over here. Over here. Up in the balcony. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over there. In the balcony. In the room. Keep coming. Keep coming. God love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's it. God love you. God love you. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is your moment. This is your moment. Yeah, God love you. God bless you. Oh, God love you. Amen. Isn't this awesome? We're just so thrilled you've come down here today. God bless you. But you know something? As much as we're thrilled, God is more thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're going to pray a prayer asking Jesus to come into your heart and life and wash your sins away. I'm going to pray it out loud a line at a time and I'm going to ask you to repeat it out loud after me each line. But you're not going to do it just by yourself. The whole crowd is going to pray it with you. Are you with me on that? Let's pray. Let's pray. Here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I thank you for this opportunity to receive you into my life. I confess to you now that I am a sinner and I need you. I ask you to wash all of my sin away. I thank you now, Lord Jesus, that you are hearing and answering my prayer. You are now coming into my life. You are now washing my sin away. I now belong to you and you belong to me. You are now my Saviour and I am now your child. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, all of you at the front, I'm going to ask you to do something. And that is, don't go back to your seat right now. We're going to get you to go with this wonderful pastor into this room just over here. They're going to talk with you, pray with you, get you to fill out a decision card, give you some literature, Because this is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of a lifelong adventure. Amen. Amen. So would you just turn and follow this pastor right now? Give him a big hand as they go. Hallelujah.